Hey, what's up? I'm DJ Six Smith. Welcome to Sit Down. Tommy Oliver is here with us. 40 Years a Prisoner, his brand new documentary. Tommy, nice to meet you, man. How are you? Very nice to meet you. I'm doing well. So this is a really fascinating story. And for people in Philadelphia, they know a lot about it. But, you know, maybe people outside of Philadelphia don't know a ton about this. So what was it like putting this documentary together, especially, you know, in a year in 2020 where we just had a real reckoning with police and racial injustice as well? It's an interesting thing because you say that and the media and a lot of other people, they've somehow sort of caught up where like for me, black lives don't matter any more today or this year than they did five years ago or 10 years prior. And so I've been making this project for probably three and a half, almost four years. And it, it wasn't a response to anything that's happening. Like this is the, this is the reality for so many of us and has been. And so it's been a, a pretty crazy process because one of the things that really struck me in the beginning was realizing that what moved forward against some 40 years ago, police brutality, wrongful incarceration, systemic racism, abuse of power, same things we're fighting against when I started this process, same things we're fighting against now. And so it's a problem. And it was a, a long journey. And for, for Mike Africa Jr., the, the fight to get his parents out, it was just a, it was a lot. Yeah, you mentioned Mike, and it takes individuals like him to go through every step of the process just to even have an opportunity here. So what was most powerful about his persistence and just about his story in general? I mean, it was just that. You have this guy who grew up in with the unimaginable circumstances. This, this guy was literally born in prison, never saw his parents outside of prison, was passed around as a kid going from family member to family member and just had every reason to be angry, to be bitter, to be mad, yet he didn't have a shred of bitterness about him. He was just a guy who wanted his family home and he was willing to do whatever it took to make that, hap to make that happen. And there was such beauty in that, there was such power in that, there was such love in that. And so for me, I just wanted to be around that. I wanted to be able to capture that and share that in any way possible. Especially too, when there's people that were involved that were blamed for things that never even happened and in situations where things were completely taken out of context. And even just the whole idea of MOVE being identified as a terrorist organization, like it's, it's really nuts when you just peel back the layers. So for you, when you started to tell this story, what was most important in just providing all the context for how ridiculous all of this is? That is just it, like the, the context and being able to tell something accurately, because so much of what happened in the 70s and with this story in particular was that MOVE was dehumanized and the story was told from a completely warped perspective. And so it's not that MOVE was without its faults because they were, but even that, like there was a lack of, of honesty, there was a lack of completeness and there was a lack of just telling things as they were. And it was so warped. And once you dehumanize the people, it becomes very easy to justify anything that happens. And so I just wanted to make sure that I told an accurate story. I told them as it actually happened. And so, which is something that as wild as it seems has not really been shown or shared. How does the city of Philadelphia factor into all this? Because, you know, we've seen issues with police and race forever, right? And cities mm -hmm. all across America, but how does specifically Philadelphia factor in here? So it's probably a bit counterintuitive, but this film is actually in many ways, a love letter to Philly. Like, I love Philly. It is my city and I, I love it with all my heart, but Philly needs to do better. It needed to do, to do better then, it needs to do better now. I saw a video a couple of months ago that broke my heart. There were a couple of Philadelphia police officers who had their knee on a black person's neck. He yelled out, I can't breathe. And they yelled back, that SHIT don't work here. On top of that, the this film it played the Philadelphia Film Festival. And the very day that it played the Philadelphia Film Festival was the day that Walter Wallace Jr. was shot. Mm. And so we as a city, we need to do better. And this film is a love letter in the way that, you know, if you're in a relationship and you argue, but then you stop, 
you choose to not argue anymore, typically means you don't care. You don't care enough to argue. And so this is me arguing. This is me holding us accountable because when we forget what we did, when we forget our history, we are doomed to repeat it. And Philly, I love Philly with all my heart, but Philly still needs to do better. I, I think that's really beautifully said because you care so much about the situation that you're putting out this film. And it's so important for a number of different reasons because there's the group of people that lived through this that we don't want those people to forget this. The group of people that didn't live through this that can experience this for the first time and also to accurately portray history because Tommy, as you know, it, so much of it comes down to actually who's telling the story and the story has been warped. So what does it mean to you to accurately tell the story, to tell it with the context of, like you said, like move had its faults, but this is also BS that it happened. What does it mean to you to, to bear that responsibility with this story? I think that for anyone with any semblance of a platform, there's a responsibility to use that platform responsibly and to actually do something to improve the, the lives of other people. And so for me, that's what I try to do with everything that I do. And in this case, it's trying to, to show what happened. It's trying to understand the human toll. And just as a city, it's like, I grew up in Philly, but I never really understood move. I never really understood what happened. And so if I don't understand, and if so many other people from my generation don't, then how, how are we going to learn? How are we going to understand? And so I just hope that people take from this that there was more than what was told and also to do their own research. And don't even stop at me. It's like, I'm not, I'm just one person and the rest of my team, but do your own research and think for yourself and make your own decisions and form your own opinions. Yeah, no question about it. You mentioned the fact that this took over three years. Documentary filmmaking is a labor of love, as you know. What was the biggest surprise that you encountered along the way? Two things, one good, one bad. Okay. The bad was after Delbert had been beaten. The three officers were eventually charged a year or so later. After their trial, after they were not even found guilty, but or not found not guilty, but decided that they were not guilty, the three of them did an interview. Well, not an interview, but they were, uh, there was a reporter who came up to them afterward. And all three of them, even though it was unambiguous what happened, where they beat Delbert to within an inch of his life, there was there were photos, there were eyewitnesses, there was film of it. All three of them said they would have done it again. And to me, I, to this day, I can't reconcile that. I can't reconcile what that is, whether it's just evil or vitriol or I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's more than just a sign of the time. There's more than just, you know, that was the regime. And so like, that is just a hard thing. These are people who are supposed to be protecting and serving Yet they said they would beat that man almost to death again. That's insane. On TV. It's crazy. Like double down publicly. And so it's like, I don't know how to how to reconcile that. And so to this day. And the other side was just just how much love Mike has for his family and how he was willing to do whatever it took. And so it was just a beautiful thing to witness. And also for his parents, who despite not seeing each other for 40 years, still loved each other madly. And as though they had spent every day together for 40 years. It's really incredible when you think about it and love looks differently for every single family, whether you met that person, whether you've never met that person, and, and your story here speaks to that. So, Tommy, I really appreciate the time, man. Thank you so much for making this film, and best luck with everything going forward, okay? Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.